Hello everyone, Clifferus here, and today, here's a movie review. Not done that before. So the movie I'm going to be reviewing is Lords of Chaos, and uh, don't tell anyone I said this, but it's really, really, really fucking good. So, Lords of Chaos is a film directed by Jonas Ackerland, uh, and starring Rory Culkin, of all people. Uh, it basically tells the story of mayhem and the rise of Norwegian black metal in the, I suppose, the late 80s to early 90s, and details all of the weird shit that goes down along the way. Now, a little bit about Jonas Ackerland. Uh, he has a very, very interesting history and is very deeply rooted in black metal from the very conception of the genre. See, Jonas Ackerland was the original drummer for Bathory. Yeah, that's right. That band. Uh, <laughs> and when he left Bathory, he went on to become possibly one of the most prolific music video directors of all time. I have a list here of some of the bands he's directed music videos for. So, Candlemass, Metallica, Ramstein. So, you know, pretty, pretty fucking metal. Um, what about Iggy Pop? What about Jamiroquai? What about Roxette, The Rolling Stones, Jane's Addiction, Robbie Williams, Madonna, Lady Gaga, and David Guetta? And that's just a selection, right? This guy has done so many fucking music videos for so many different musical artists and bands. It boggles the mind. And, of course, he directs movies as well. The movies that he's directed are Spun, Horseman, Small Apartments, Lords of Chaos, and Polar. Now, I haven't seen Spun, Horseman, or Small Apartments. I have seen Polar. It is on Netflix right now. You can watch it. Um, it's a very, very interesting action thriller, I suppose. Um, very, very interesting indeed. It is not your typical... You know, it, it's like it's an assassin movie, but it's not your typical assassin movie, and uh, it has a lot of criticisms about film, which, you know, I will come back to that later because that is also a theme that I, I sensed in Lords of Chaos. Not necessarily criticism about film, but criticism about black metal and attitudes within the community. But I am getting ahead of myself here. So how is the film? Well, like I said, I think it's really, really fucking good. I think it's a fucking masterpiece, in fact. And, you know, I was quite sceptical going into this. I mean, of course, the first time I heard that they were making a film about mayhem, I'm like, fuck yes, let's do this. But... You know, there's been some drama surrounding the film, I suppose. There's been a lot of the original members of Mayhem denouncing the film. Because, well, first of all, it's based on a book. Uh, I haven't read the book, but... Yeah, the original members of Mayhem apparently really don't like the book. That's what I've read online. So, naturally, they are quite adverse to the film as well. Particularly uh, Varg, who... <laughs> has just the most hilarious YouTube channel on the f on the fucking website. It's it's quite surreal seeing Varg vlogging. Um do recommend checking out, but just, you know, be aware of his um <clears throat> politics. But back to the film. Um so my skepticism going in was, you know, is it going to be very historically inaccurate? Is it going to present the characters in a, a sort of unbelievable, a sort of sensationalised way? Is it going to, you know, be really corny? <laughs> you know, that, that was my biggest fear, that it was going to be just really cringy to what... Within the first five minutes of the film, that, um, that, that presumption was completely shattered, uh... So I guess I'll I'll start talking about some of the more the mechanics of the film, the technical aspects and whatnot. 
Um, so one important point I want to make is that this film is narrated. So Rory Culkin is playing Euronymous, and he does an outstanding job, in my opinion. Um, the version of Euronymous that is being presented in the film is perhaps not accurate. It doesn't matter, right? Um, there have been some changes made to the characters, but they're necessary for the film to work in my opinion, so I'm totally okay with it. So the version of Euronymous in the film is, I think, quite strongly fictionalised. There's been a lot of um, choices made that are probably not based on anything other than you know what works from a filmmaking perspective. Um, and Euronymous does narrate the film. Now, narration is a very tricky thing to pull off in film. Uh, more often than not, I find it doesn't does not work for me. But it worked in this film very well, I think, um, because the the film it is has its moments where it is very shocking, and it is very difficult to watch. Um, I suppose I'll get into spoilers uh, if you don't want any spoilers skip to this time code on the screen and I'll just give you my non-spoiler summary um, but yeah so there are scenes very graphic scenes of self-harm in this film because of course dead you know cut himself a lot that was part of his you know his persona that was that was part of the whole the, the act I say act I you know the way that he's presented in the film is, you know, I, th I think probably quite accurate. He's, he is very depressed and, you know, contemplates suicide a lot. Um, and I guess that was always used in Mayhem's image as a kind of, you know, we don't give a fuck sort of thing. You know, we don't give a, we don't give a fuck about what you think. You think death is bad, we think death is good, you know. Um, but dead in this film um, is very much that way because he is genuinely depressed and it, you know it's it's very well done it shows him being vulnerable um which you know what what is the least cavalt thing that you could possibly think of is probably being vulnerable and being open about your emotions right but the thing that you need to remember is, you know, these guys may have been the originators of true Norwegian blackmail, but they were still people. They still had feelings and emotions, and and we all do, you know? So I really appreciated the film presenting the characters in that way, because even if it isn't historically accurate, it is emotionally honest very honest about those kinds of feelings and how they can drive people to do certain things. That's why I'm okay with a lot of the changes. Um, and there are also little things as well, like the, is it the third church burning scene? In reality, it was Varg, Euronymous and Samoth who burnt that church down, but in the film they replaced Samoth with Faust and that choice is fine but in my opinion because at that point in the film Faust is already established as a character because later on in the film there is a scene that depicts what you know really happened in real life where he was approached by a gay man in uh, a park um, you know approached for sex and he, you know, Faust rejected him and I mean, obviously I guess at this point in time nobody can really know exactly what happened other than Faust himself, but the way it's presented in the film, you know, he rejects his advances, he tries to get away from him and the guy keeps following and following him and Faust looks quite scared and quite vulnerable in that scene and then he pulls out his knife and stabs him a bunch of times <laughs> and the violent scenes in this film, they're very, very graphic, very realistic, 
incredibly hard to watch at times, like, especially the scene with dead suicide, like, I, I, you know, it takes a lot to shock me in a film, but those just graphic close-ups of the knife going into his arm, like, absolutely fucking outrageous, it was so realistic, it was so well done, and I was wincing throughout the entire scene, and like, you know, I can, I can stomach quite a lot of graphic violence in films. Like I sat through the entirety of the thing with just a massive grin on my face because those fucking practical effects are so good. But man, the practical effects are really good in Lords of Chaos as well, and the effect that it has is that it's incredibly shocking during these scenes. Um, but Jonas Ackerland, being the fucking genius that he is manages to make this work by injecting humour at the ends of all those scenes. So you if you can imagine watching a scene with fucking, you know, some guy just kills himself in the most graphic and violent way. There's blood everywhere. And then that scene ends and then Euronymous is narrating to introduce the next scene and he says something that's really, really funny. And that just disarms all of the tension that has been built up. The, obviously the tension is necessary for the shock value, but as soon as that's over, you know, it's time to get on with the film. And the audience is still like, oh my fucking god, what did I just watch? So to add a joke in there at that point is absolutely essential, in my opinion. And he fucking nails it. He absolutely nails it. So that's something, the pacing of the film. I was never bored once throughout the entire film, and I knew exactly what was coming around each corner, you know. I know the story of Mayhem. I knew exactly what scene I was about to watch every single time, but it held my attention. And pff, I think that's pretty remarkable, you know. I, I think that's uh, a great achievement. You know, if you're watching something you already know the story, then it can be quite easy to switch off and just be like, yeah, I know what's happening. But I, I never once stopped paying attention to the film. It, it just it held my attention because the visuals, the performance, the music, it was... The, the presentation was just perfect, I think. Absolutely perfect. There's a dream sequence towards the end of the film where... Euronymous is having flashbacks in his sleep about his time with Dead at the, in the cabin out in the woods, and you can definitely see Jonas Ackerland's, um, you know, sort of music video influence coming out during that scene. It's very fast paced, lots of quick cuts, lots of, you know, bold imagery, and you know, it's, it's a fucking good dream sequence. The, the use of colour in particular is, is very, very creative. Um, and yeah, it's, it's no wonder that Jonas Ackerland has directed so many music videos for so many huge artists. He is an incredibly talented director. And this Lords of Chaos project, uh, you know, I can tell it's a... Uh, it's a labour of love for him. You know, he has been involved in the black metal scene for a very, very long time. You know, he is he was there on the ground floor. He was drumming for Bathory, you know? And now he's made a film chronicling the story of Mayhem. And you can tell he cares about it and he cares about the music and he you know, even cares about the, the characters that he doesn't glorify in any way. He doesn't present uh, their actions in a way that's, you know, glorified at all. Um, the the church burning scenes, the the self mutilation scenes, um, the murder scenes, they they are presented in such a way that you know it's it's very clear that this is not being glorified. This this is just a, a very raw, very realistic representation of these events that actually happened. I guess that could be my summary of like, you know, the whole 
thing about historical accuracy with the film. It is very realistic and very true when it benefits the film. And when it doesn't benefit the film, it takes all of the right liberties to make it interesting and make it entertaining. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess that's my summary. Um, absolute masterpiece, in my opinion. A great film. Um, a, that's something I forgot to mention. So I was talking about in Polar, there's a lot of uh, criticism about action movies within that film and within Lords of Chaos there's a lot of criticism of certain attitudes within the black metal community because they, they, they show Euronymous and Varg and, and all these people within the black circle trying to one-up each other, trying to be more extreme and more shocking um, and trying to be Trevu Cavalt and calling each other posers and all this stuff and it's to me it always felt like it was presented in a way where it was criticizing that kind of attitude and it showed the characters themselves even though they're going along with us and trying to be true they're still you can tell by their facial expressions they've got an inner conflict they're like is this going too far um but also they can't say that because then they'll get called a poser right and, and that is, you know, a very important conflict within the film. It's what drives everything. And whether or not that is what drove the events in real life or not, I think doesn't matter at all. I'm judging this as a film, and as a film it is a great film. Certainly one of the best music biopics I've ever seen and I quite possibly one of the best films I've seen full stop but from a, you know a historical accuracy standpoint like I say it, it is accurate when it needs to be and then when it's inaccurate it's so that the film can continue to you know it can maintain its tone and it can be consistent and it can be entertaining so I guess that about does it. I think that's pretty much everything I have to say about this film for now. I'm definitely going to revisit this and rewatch it. Um, and I may have some more thoughts on it later. But for now, I, I absolutely 100% recommend this film. Um, fair warning, there are some incredibly graphic scenes in it. And if you're squeamish at all about blood and violence, then those scenes are going to make you squirm. I don't consider myself squeamish at all, and I squirmed at those scenes, so fair fucking warning, but I will defend those scenes by saying the way that they're presented does not glorify those actions, and it is a very apt way to criticise those actions and those kinds of, you know, negative elitist attitudes within the community at the time, so yeah fucking brilliant film go watch it and that's all for now see you later